Hello, welcome to Accounting Hub. I'm Professor George Carpin, PhD in Accounting. And our topic today is Revenue Recognition, Multiple Performance Obligation. This is a series of six videos about revenue recognition. The first one is an overview. The second one is single performance obligation. The third one is this one. And then we have three additional videos about long-term contracts, profitable, partial loss, and entire loss. And all of the videos, they are in our video descriptions. And for the uh, long-term contracts, we will be working with an Excel file and the Excel file is free to download. So it will be in the video description of these videos. And so we have here the five steps of to revenue recognition. First one, identify the contracts, the legal rights. It doesn't matter if we are talking about single or multiple performance obligation. Identify the performance obligation, single, only one. I go to grocery store and I purchase a box of strawberry. Or multiple, we are selling more than one goods or service. And determine the transaction price. It's not our price, how much is our revenue. Allocate the transaction price. Doesn't make sense for a single, but for multiple is one of the most important ones. If I am purchasing uh, two goods and three services and I pay for everything $500, how much is each one? It can be clear, clearly identified, then no problem. Or it cannot be clearly uh, identified, then we need to allocate it. And then when recognize revenue when each performance is satisfied at whatever time is appropriate for each performance obligation. Can be the same time or different times. We will be working with the most complex one that is different times. Uh, if we suspect that a contract has multiple performance obligations, steps two and four comes into play. Step two, identify the performance of obligation. We have more than one, so what are they? And then the allocation. Uh, uh, step two, identify the performance obligation. Sellers account for a promise to provide a good or service as a performance obligation if the good or service is distinct from other goods or service. A good or service is distinct if it is both, not any, both, so both two, capable of being distinct, separately identifiable from other goods or services in the contract. For instance, I am purchasing a new vehicle. Uh, man, a vehicle has a thousand of components, but I am not purchasing the components, I am purchasing the vehicle, so it is not multiple performance obligation because it is not separately identified in the contract. So I'm purchasing one vehicle. So it is a single performance obligation. I go to grocery store and purchase a lot of stuff. It is very easy, but it is a multiple performance obligation. Capable of being distinct and on my on my recipe or notes, they are separately identifiable. Uh, example of failing the separately identifiable criteria construction contracts. I am constructing a new house. I'm constructing a new house, not the walls, the door, the floor, and so on. Okay. For instance, Scarpin Corporation manufactures the Gabby system. Scarpin is my last name. Gabby is the name of my baby daughter. A device that allows parents to play infant games with their children. The Gabby system includes the physical Gabby module as well as a one year subscription to the monthly updates. Uh, we sell individual one year sub subscription uh, to the Gabby system platform for $30. Customer can access the Gabby system using Gabby as well as other internet devices. So they can purchase it separately. And we also have the Gabby devices for one, $120. Customer can use a, 
a Gabby device to access the Gabby system. So they can purchase only the Gabby device or only the subscription or both. However, it, so if they purchase it separately, it is 150. However, we have a package deal, a module plus subscription for 140. And what if we purchase for the 140? We are purchasing both. How much would be the device? How much would be the subscription? On January 1st, Skype Corporation delivered 1,000 Gabby system to toy stores at a price of 140 per system. Skype receives one. Uh, one thousand and four, one hundred and forty thousand dollars from Toy Stars on January twenty fifth. So let's go here. So step one: identify the contract. Yes, identify the performance obligation. Uh, go to step is to see if it's both. So Gabby system contains two distinct goods and service: Gabby module and Gabby system. Subscription. So we have two performance obligation. Transaction price 140 per system times 1,000 system $100,000. And what about the allocation? The transaction price for one Gabby system is 140. Standalone price for a Gabby module is 120. Standalone price of a Gabby system is 30. Why we need to allocate here? Because the Gabby model will be revenue now. We are delivering it now. However, the subscription will be revenue only over time because we are not delivering it now. We will deliver updates along one year. So it is not a revenue the 30 will not be revenue now. So we have a problem here. So how do, do we do that? So how much is 120 if we combine with the 150? So our two standalone prices combined, it is 150. 120 is 80% of the 150. So it will be 80% of the 140. And the Gabby system will be the remaining 20, 30 divided by 150. So it will be 20% of the 140. So Gabby model will be 112. Gabby system subscription will be 20, 28. And let's record it. Recognize revenue when each performance is satisfied. On January 1st, we charge the revenue from the Gabby modules, but the first revenue from the Gabby system. So accounts receivable, 140. Sales revenue, the 80% of the 140. So it will be 112. And the fee revenue, the 28. Or if we go back here, 112 times 1,000, 28 times 1,000. Okay, and then Gabby modules 112. I am not in your screen anymore. And Gabby system 28. So deferred revenue 28. And then over the period of time, over each of 12 months, deferred revenue 28 divided by 12, 2333.33. Service revenue. The same. So the fee rate revenue, 28, and then divided by 12. Our allocation is always per month, not per days. Per days, January would be greater than February and so on. So we allocate it over month to make it smooth. And then service revenue is, the, is my credit. So the same, 20, 28. And a brief summary. Identify the contract. So, okay, I'm out again. Uh, identify the contract. Identify the performance obligation. Transaction price. Allocate the transaction price. 
to performance obligation based on the relative standalone selling price of the goods or service. And when the seller recognizes revenue at a single point of time, when control passes to the customer, which is more likely if the customer has obligation to pay, legal title, possession, assume the risk and rewards, accept the asset. However, over a, so for instance, when we go to grocery stores, we have it. Or our uh, Gabio module here. Over a period of time, if customer consumes benefit, for instance, subscription, control assets at its created, for instance, construction, selling is creating an asset that has no alternative use to the seller, for instance, a very customized product. For instance, uh, armies or air forces, when they uh, order for some private companies, it has no other use, and the private company is not allowed to sell it to other customers. Okay, guys, so that's it. Thank you. Uh, if you have questions or comments, leave it here or email me at jscarpingedgemail.com. Subscribe our channel, like our video, also like our Facebook page, Accounting Hub by Dr. Scarping. Have a very nice day and God bless you.